Christianity is an all daisies around here. In order for me to produce more fruit, I had to be taken out of my place of comfort. I guess I pray hard enough. God will stop it. <laughs> no, that didn't happen. This moment is the day that the Lord has Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those who are new here, my name is Mariella and if you're coming back, then welcome back. Also, welcome to this space called Receive and Release. Space to learn, grow, share and connect transparently on this journey called Life Through the Right Book of Life. So, I can't believe I'm already filming the second entry of this beautiful space that I was blessed to host along the Holy Spirit because he's always with me. Before I begin, I want to share with you guys a little testimony time which ties very much into the message today and it's about my year abroad which is so crazy. That is when I actually started my YouTube channel and to see the way things have changed in my life, no. I would be absolutely ungrateful if I didn't tell you guys the testimony that I am still walking in, living in, but that God has absolutely like taken me through. So as many of you guys know, if you watch my other videos, I've been on a year abroad in Spain for the past eight months, the requirement for my third year for my course, I do business in Spanish. And yeah, so the third year required me to spend a whole academic year in Spain. So, uh, guys, <laughs> if I was to tell you that it's actually only by God's grace that I am still here, because the amount of things that I have faced during this, like, eight, ten months, oh, I would be here forever. But what I wanted to share with you guys is, I think, something that I understood I needed to be very transparent about from the start, because I wouldn't have been able to start this journey in this completely new country without God. Like I genuinely didn't think I would have survived there without him. And I say this because before I actually moved, it was like the summer before. And I remember I had just been baptized in June. So July was my birthday. I was really excited. I'm like, yes, let's go. Like I'm gonna go to Spain. But at the back of my mind, I was just kind of like, I hope it doesn't happen because I was like, I personally don't, like I'm okay where I am I'm quite comfortable where I am like I had made like new Christian friendships I'd met my sisters for life a shout out to you guys <laughs> and I was just like god like please just don't do this to me because I was just like oh I know we need to do this but I was like surely I don't have to do it like something will come in like if if I I guess I pray hard enough god will stop it <laughs> no that didn't happen obviously and I remember um I faced one of probably the biggest like challenges in my faith and it was when I was looking for accommodation so I was really picky I was like oh I want a studio I want a one bedroom apartment because I don't want to live with others like I want to be my own space not actually because like I'm I'm like antisocial or anything I just think that when I have my own space, I can worship God. I can do what I need to do, like without anybody disturbing me, without having to contain myself. So I was like, I just want my own space, right? I was like, I'm keeping God in mind as well, you know, like, do you know what I mean? Let's get my own space. So I, that's what I was looking for. And I kid you not, every time I'd apply or like I'd look for something and I found something and like I'm texting people, like I'm texting the landlord, they'd always be like to me, no, we're looking for a professional, somebody that has a full time job, or no, we don't want students. I was like, what kind of, what kind of, I was like, no, the enemy's hand is all over this. I said, no, I'm gonna pray even harder. No. I actually probably must have looked like a fool to God because he was like, bro, you have any... Like, because the problem was I was trying to do, make this decision by myself. God is just going to have to be on board with this, like whether he likes it or not. And <laughs> I feel like God was looking at me like, okay, keep keep doing things the way you think is right and then we'll see how it ends. It got to like, I think the end of July now and I still hadn't found anything and I'm leaving. I'm meant to be leaving in September. I'm like, what, where am I going? Like, what is, what is going on? I remember my mom and my spiritual father were literally like to me like, no, we need to keep praying. You find somewhere, you find somewhere. And the accommodation that I am in now, my friend Christian had already booked it and I was just like, no, I don't want to stay there because there was just certain things that I didn't like and I was just like, no, I don't want to stay, I don't want to stay. This is now maybe beginning mid-August and I was like, 
I am leaving in less than a month. I need to find somewhere now. So I started praying, I started praying and I hadn't told my mom that I'd found this place like ages ago because I was like, I don't like it. My mom was like to me like, listen, you're just gonna have to just settle. And I was like, <sighs> I was like, fine. I was like, I'm not happy about this. But in that moment, my faith was declining because I was just like, why on earth are you not coming through for me? In reality, I wasn't seeking. I wasn't seeking for him. I wasn't asking him what he thought. I just basically wanted the genie like, oh, give me this basically. And I realized that, <laughs> first of all, that's not how faith works. <laughs> faith doesn't work like that at all. Like it doesn't because that's why it's called a relationship. It's a partnership. You, you go to God about everything and anything, just like you would with your partner. Like, tend to keep everything to yourself there's certain things that you need to end when you make decisions big decisions like this as well you would discuss them like with them you don't just bring your opinion just like this is what we're gonna do no it's to be a discussion and i <laughs> in my head i guess it didn't want, I didn't want it to be a discussion i had to let my walls down again and i had to be like okay god like <laughs> what do you want me to do <laughs> and i felt like he was just kind of like finally Fast forward now, I've obviously paid for the deposit and my faith was still kind of shaky because I am petrified because I don't know what to expect and I'm also going to be by myself. Like I had created my, not created, but like I would kind of like met my people, you know, formed like my Christian community and I was just like, I, I, I'm I, comfortable here. I want to go. Like, God, please don't let me go. And he was just like, no, you need to go. So I just said, okay, do you know what? fine let's go because in my head as well i was like okay maybe it's not that bad maybe there's something there that he needs me to do maybe i should i just need to be obedient and just go now that i'm nearly at the end of it guys i can say that first of all god is not a man that shall lie ever he never lies if he says trust in me it's because he knows he knows what's best for you and not just that what seemed so big to me was probably a small portion of what God had in store for me. And it reminds me of the verse in Psalm 9 verse 10 that says, those who know you by name, trust in you because you've never abandoned those who seek you. Because I know you by name and I know that you will not abandon me, I should keep seeking you. In everything and, you know, anything that I do, I should seek you. And funnily enough, all my friends were like to me, no, he's bringing you there for a reason. He's bringing you there for a reason. And I was just like, guys, I don't know what you're talking about. And I didn't even ask. I was just like, whatever. And then it was, it's not until later on that also things started happening <laughs> that literally made me seek for him, that he revealed to me the reason why he brought me here. It was to build me. He had to isolate me to build me, to refine me and to, you know, birth out new beginnings out of me and out of my relationship with him, out of the secret place. You can very much see this as well, this promise and this need to be isolated in um, John 15 where it says I am the tree vine and my father is the gardener every branch in me that does not produce fruit he removes and he prunes every branch that produces fruit so that it will produce more fruit in order for me to produce more fruit I had to be taken out of my place of comfort because it's in the discomfort and actually coming used to and becoming okay with discomfort that I realized that that is the only way my faith is gonna grow. If I'm always comfortable, I'm gonna get comfortable with the way things are. And one thing about your faith is gonna be, there's gonna be different seasons. I understood that in order for me to produce the fruits, the seeds that he planted in me and in my heart, sometimes I needed to be taken out of comfort, which leads me to today's message you can see from the title is all about taking a leap of faith and i began with this you know testimony time because i have lived the very definition of taking a leap of faith so uh, god really placed it on my heart to share my experience and also to share the truth that is in actually trusting in him and believing in his promises because trust me one thing about god he does not make a promise and not bring it to pass it always comes to pass so you guys already know before we dive into the 
for gospel we need to go to the definitions because i like to work with definitions i know that people are very logical and and they like their things you know very very well what does the internet say say about taking a leap of faith so the definition that i found for taking a leap of faith is an act of believing in or attempting something whose existence or outcome cannot be proved or known so for example if you are about to start a new business you're taking a leap of faith because you don't actually know you can't see the future you don't know what it's going to look like but you're taking a leap of faith you're taking a bet on yourself and you're like do you know what I think I can do this. Even just moving cities like I did. Countries, not cities. So that in itself is what taking a leap of faith means. And when we look at taking a leap of faith from a more biblical perspective, well, we can see this across the whole entire Bible. But the one that the Holy Spirit led me to was particularly when Peter was walking on water. And I think he actually led me to this one because this is again another verse slash story that carried me through this year and a little background so jesus had just performed the miracle of multiplying the five loaves of bread and the two fishes to the five thousand yeah to the five to the five thousand and he basically told his disciples that he wants to retreat and um spend some time with god after obviously serving which i also find so admirable that he served for god knows how long um when he was giving the sermon and the first thing that he did is i need to go and speak to my father i need to go and spend time with my father and that really touched my heart because i know it's jesus but it's the fact that regardless of how much he serves and how, regardless of how much uh, like of how tired he is or whatever he may feel in his carnal being his spirit is still eager for god his spirit is still eager to spend time with god i just found that so beautiful but anyway he basically tells him to retreat back as he sends the multitudes away so i'm reading from matthew 14 20 5 to 32 and i'm reading the csb version but i'm probably gonna put the nkjv version because i'm yet to get a new bible guys i feel like you need to have more than one bible like that's like standard so i need to get my bag jesus came toward them walking on the sea very early in the morning when the disciples saw him walking on the sea they were terrified it's a ghost they said and they cried out in fear guys i can't lie i don't blame them can you imagine being on the boat their boat is swinging right to left up and down and they see this ghost walking on the water like i can't lie i would have i would have screamed the same i would have been like yep it's a ghost guys i said this is the end but what's so crazy is that they didn't even call on god like that's the that's the lot like that's actually the last thing as we will see that's the last thing that they do and as it continues it says immediately jesus spoke to them have courage it is i don't be afraid lord if it's you peter answered him command me to come to you on the water he said come and climbing out of the boat peter started walking on the water and came toward jesus but when he saw the strength of the wind he was afraid and beginning to sink he cried out lord save me immediately jesus reached out his hand caught hold of him and said to him you of little faith why did you doubt can we just take a moment please <sighs> every single time i read this it it literally strikes my heart because i can relate to this on so many different levels and also i feel like peter's unspoken faith isn't spoken about enough he had faith he had a lot of faith peter had a lot of faith there's a whole storm going on He's on the boat with the other disciples. All they can see is literally the sea about to take them out, basically. And this and this ghost that now they've seen that it's Jesus. Peter doesn't care about any of this. He says, he looks at Jesus and he said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come on the water. And Jesus says, come. Peter steps out of the boat with his eyes fixed on Jesus. And he's looking at him and he's walking towards him, eyes still fixed at him. And I relate a lot with Peter as he's doing this because that's exactly what I had to do. I was like, okay, but I'm still trusting in you, not knowing that a period of refining was coming, but a period that was needed. And I say this because what happens next is that as Peter walks on the water 
and he's, he has his eyes fixed on Jesus, he looks away. And as he looks away, he drowns. And I can say this, when I embarked in, in this new journey, there was many times that I looked away and it felt like I was drowning. And as Peter is drowning, he feels like this is it, this is the end. As he's drowning, I feel like this is something that we can all relate to because we'll begin something with so much faith, full of faith, enough to take a leap of faith. And then the minute we face an obstacle, we basically forget about our faith. We forget the very thing that drove us to this point. We forget the very thing that fueled, you know, our hearts to actually say, yes, I'm going to take that leap of faith. And we begin to drown because we forget to call out. And this is what happened with Peter. He was drowning, but then he began to call out. He said, Lord, save me. And Jesus didn't hesitate to save him. And I also say this to highlight the fact that sometimes we forget that leaping is actually just the beginning of the race. In order for you to finish the race, you need to take a couple of more steps. But that doesn't mean that if you get injured along the way, you should just stop and give up. It just means that you need a little help. And that is exactly what Peter did. He started calling out to God and he said, Jesus, save me. And as much as he was drowning for what probably felt like years for him, it must have been a second until Jesus actually grabbed his hand and said to him, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Because this is what happens when we take our eyes off of Jesus. We begin, we allow doubt to cloud our judgment and, and, to, and to darken our hearts. And with doubt comes fear. Faith and fear cannot live accordingly in the same heart. They can't. They can't. And that's why Jesus says to him, why did you doubt? Why did you take your eyes off of me and look at your situations? Why? Because you started, you made this decision with me. So what made you think that you could carry on without me? What made you think that as you stepped out of the boat, as I commanded you to come out of the boat, what made you think that you would have been able to keep walking without me? You couldn't have. You can't say to God, God, I'm trusting you for this. God, I'm trusting you to make, you know, to help me make this decision. And you make the decision with him, but then, you face a bump, a challenge in the road and you then decide to take a decision on your own. You cannot. <laughs> one thing I'll tell you is that you cannot because you are not the one doing the re refining. Jesus is. Jesus is refining you. In the storms is where he meets you, but that's not where he leaves you. So the same way that you may have found yourself in this storm and you've called out on him, it's the same way that if you find yourself in a storm again, you can't take yourself out of it. Jesus is the one that you need to call upon to help you. It also makes me realize that sometimes we really limit God. Sometimes we really put God in the box because we think that he can only do X, Y, and Z. But God doesn't operate <laughs> on the idea that we have of him or of the things that we think he can do because he's limitless. So I'm sorry, but sometimes <laughs> he will take you through things to build you, not to harm you, but to actually give you a better hope, a future and a hope, as it says in Jeremiah 29, 11. Also, the things that you desire for your life aren't exactly what you always need. When you are desiring for something, just because it didn't come in the form of what you expected to look like, doesn't mean it's not from God. It doesn't mean that it's not for you. It just means that you need to discern whether this is actually from him or not. But the thing is, what you quickly do is disregard it because it didn't come in the form of what you expected. Jesus, when he was walking on water, he didn't look like what the disciples were used to seeing. And yet they walked every day with him. He came in the form of a ghost and he came in the form of walking on water. Why? Because he wanted to strengthen their faith. He wanted them to see another dimension of him and to realize that the limit that you may have put in your mind of me needs to be changed because I'm limitless. There's nothing in this world that I, is impossible to me. 
Because we may look at the situation and we may think, why would Jesus allow them to go through a storm to refine you? to strengthen your faith, to encourage you to take that leap of faith. And what's more crazy about this as well is that Peter was a fisherman. He knew the dangers of the Sea of Galilee. He knew of the dangers of the sea. He knew that um, the type of sea that storms can just break out at any point. But yet he was the one to say, Lord, if it is you, command me to come on the water. And that's what's more, most mind blowing to me because it's like, he disregarded what he once knew because he realized that when it comes to God, you can't come with what you know because what he knows is best. <laughs> and I'll tell you that for free. What he knows is best. As he says in his word that my thoughts are not your thoughts. Our thoughts are not his thoughts because his thoughts are actually for our good, despite of what they may look like and manifest themselves themselves as but the th our thoughts for ourselves <laughs> is always for what we think is best for us. Realistically, we don't know. <laughs> Compared to God, we don't know anything. Funnily enough, when we look at this miracle and this story, it wasn't the winds and the violent waves endangered Peter's life. It was actually his lack of faith. It's his lack of faith that made him drown because he took his eyes off of Jesus. And he looked at his situation. How many times do we do that? I, I know I do this so much. Sometimes when, you know, my, I allow doubt to flood my heart. I look at my situations instead of the promises of God, instead of his track record. God is the only one who has an impeccable track record. His promises always come to pass. He never, ever lies. But in the moment that I'm in a storm, I'm like, hey, that's it. It is the end. It has to be the end. Because I'm looking at my storm. I'm looking at my situation instead of keeping my eyes on Jesus. When you call upon his name and when you keep your eyes fixed on him, he will answer you. He won't let you drown for long. And I say for long because sometimes God lets you drown. I'll tell you the truth. Because it's not over. It's not all daisies around here. Christianity ain't all daisies around here. Still the best decision I've ever made. But it's not all daisies about. <laughs> it's not all daisies around here. I'll tell you that for free. Christianity isn't all daisies around here. If, they're tell if somebody's telling you that it's all nice and all sweet and all daisy. No, it's not. Because spiritual warfare is real. <laughs> It's real. But I say that but also because God takes you, and I always love this analogy, God takes you through the fire, not to burn you, but to refine you. And going in the fire and, you know, drowning in the storm is all part of the race. In order for you to become a better vessel, in order for you to reap the fruits of the seeds that, you know, were planted in your heart, you're going to have to be refined whether you like it or not, you know? Many say that, you know, I went through these things in my life and that's why I'm the person that I am today. Generally, the trials and the tribulations that you face in your walk are the things that are going to better your faith. It's more the trials and the tribulations that help you grow your faith than the good times. I'll tell you. Because when you come out of the trials and tribulations, there's always breakthrough. And the breakthrough is always followed by goodness. It's always followed by you realizing his goodness and, you know, seeing things in a different light and realizing that what you think is so bad is probably not as bad as you think. Now that you know the drowning is part of, you know, it's part of this race and it's part of this walk, you also need to understand that taking that leap of faith is your job. But the next steps have to be led by the one who began the good work in you. You can't, you can't continue unless you keep him in the loop. You can't continue and you can't make any more decisions unless you confide and you, you know, discuss it with the one who started the good work in you. Because your leap of faith is a step 
let him show you how to walk the rest of the walk. No, because slow and steady wins the race, no? Exactly, and it's the same thing here. We have been called to live a life walking on water. You know, walking by trusting in him, or better said, walking by faith and not by sight. I also want to remind you with this that Peter's one failure because, you know, as much as he did look away and he began to drown, you know, you may, you may see that and say, well, he failed Jesus. Okay, but Peter's one failure didn't dictate his future. It dictated his next steps. It made him realize that he needs to put his trust back in God. He needs to put his trust back fully into God because he realized that he took some steps. Yeah, he drowned. Okay, let's try again, but this time with God. And again, he, as I said earlier, he recognized that faith and fear cannot live in the same heart accordingly. They cannot. It's either one or the other. But realistically, I would rather take a leap of faith than live in fear. And that, because that is not a way to live. It's in so many different ways in my life. And I genuinely do hope that you this is kind of like opened your eyes up as well to realize like what is actually distracting you because if you've begun you know this race by keeping your eyes on jesus what distracted you to take your eyes off of him was it fear because fear does not come from god was it you know an idol in your life because we don't realize how many idols we've made in our lives we really don't realize it like something as silly as our phones have literally become an idol because like when we when we're faced with that question you know what's the one thing that you can't live without most of us say our phone and that's kind of crazy to me because is that the very thing that's distracting us because we've taken that leap of faith but yet we're so consumed by other things that we're not being consumed by the actual fire that drives us to live a life that is pleasing to God and not man. Because I always think of the burning bush when I also think of this analogy of the fire is that Moses, when he was faced with the burning bush, he, like the bush was on fire, but it was not be like, it was not being consumed. And that is exactly how our lives, our spiritual lives should be. We should be, you know consumed by the fire of the holy spirit but that fire doesn't burn us it's not burning but it should alive like a burning feeling to you know want to trust in him and want to do his will so that is my message guys god takes you through the fire to refine you not to burn you he wants you to live out that consumption not out the consumption of your situations your situations won't change unless you let him in trust me when you let him into your situations as well then next time you face something you're going to deal with it so much differently because you know that you're not alone in this so i hope that this resonated with your spirit and that it really helped you and i'm really glad that you are here i'm really glad that you watched this i'm very grateful for each and every single one of you that watch um my videos i'm also very grateful because the holy spirit is really leading this and it's really nice to see that a lot of people have also come to me and messaged me and said like you know your me your message i think in my last episode really re resonated with my heart and it also helped me realize that I need to be re refined in order for you guys to also, you know, reap of this goodness um, through this platform. So I am really glad that you are here. And as you already know, I'm going to end this video with a little prayer for you who is watching this. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you and I bless your holy name. I thank you for this message and I thank you for your son or your daughter that is watching this. I just pray, oh Lord, that when they go through the storms of life, Lord, that they will not look at their situations, but they will go back to your track record they will look up onto the hills knowing where their help comes from that father lord even when they're walking on the water father lord they will lock their eyes onto you lord jesus so that they will not drown but they will trust in your everlasting peace and mercy over their life i thank you and i bless your holy name in jesus name i pray amen amen and amen again guys thank you so much for tuning in and i will see you on the next one bye
Mm-hmm.